So the history of the Trillin Cook-Off is actually a very rich history um, and got started back in 2007. Uh, myself and Sean Hirsch were in the assistant director of housing. We're brainstorming and thinking different ideas for events. Um, and uh, we consulted with the senior dean of students, Dr. Vic Schwartz, uh, and we came up with the uh, infamous Trillin Cook-Off. Uh, so we're really excited to be doing it again, second time now. And uh, each time it gets better and better. Uh, I would say the Chulin Cook-Off is one of the pillars of Yeshiva University, actually. One of the nice things, actually, uh, about the contest this year is we tied it in with our food drive. So that way it's not just about having fun, but it's also about you know, thinking, of, thinking about other people as well. Um, so the food, we have a table in the back, and all the proceeds from that, the food is going to be going to the Upper Manhattan Food Pantry. Let the Chulin Cook-Off begin! The most unique thing about our chant is that it has mango in it. I've never heard of putting mango in a chant. So I hope it like it doesn't kill the chant. How much do you need that's, like, that's, that's a secret ingredient. But it's also well, uh, we actually joined two years ago for the first annual chant competition. We sort of... Is it annual or, or...? No, it starts annual. But it, we didn't have last but now year. it's annual. Okay, we, back to annual. We sort of came in last. Right, um, dead last. We're not really trying to improve so much from there. Right. Our recipe uh, came from the, it's a classic recipe, from the, um, from the bonfire setting. Uh, you know, you have some, what do you do at a bonfire? What do you do at a bonfire? Uh, usually you have a fire. You have s'mores. s'mores. You have s'mores. That is made of, I'm sorry, that is made of marshmallows, chocolate syrup, sure and graham cracker, and a little bit of a bonfire. Here, we decided to make our chunt with some s'mores. With so you can always have s'more, s'more chalant. chalant. Most people are going to be able to feed other people with their chalant. Ours isn't really meant for that so much. A little bit of for the, for the appearance and those those risky enough to put their lives on the line. I'm probably going to gonna taste it. He, he won't Last be. year, judging this contest, there was some really amazing chalants that we've had. Um, just enjoyed a lot of them. I'm, I, don't, I don't follow a recipe. I'm just, I just like to put in different things, whatever I like, whatever cuts of meat that I have, and vegetables and potatoes, and it's never going to be bad. You cook something for that long, or you put something good in, good ingredients in, you're going to get good ingredients out. It's always going to be oh, good. Oh, well, I did the same event, um, I think it was three years ago, the last time we did it, and it was really a lot of fun, and it's great to see the kids really invested in what they're doing. Actually, I don't have a favorite chalant recipe because um, I was not brought up on chalant. I was brought up on dairy lunches for Shabbos. So I've learned to love chalant. Um, it would rank high only because um, it's a way into the hearts of my children. What is President Joel, what is, it, what is his attitude towards chalant? Oh, he likes chalant with lots of meat. The more meat, the better. It doesn't really matter what else is in it, but the more meat, the better. I don't know what my secret ingredient is. I put a can of Coca-Cola in my chalant, and it caramelizes. It helps caramelize the meat, and it makes everything just a touch sweeter. I actually do know what the origin is. It's really a food of poverty. The first person, to, to the first person I don't know, but chalant is truly a food of poverty, and it was, you know, when Jews lived in a shtetl, and no one had an oven, and they didn't really have means to, you know, purchase real food for Shabbos, so it was you know, meager amounts of meat and potatoes which were abundant and cheap and whatever scraps of anything they had and then they would bring their pots to the town baker where there's a huge fire going and they would drop their pots off and when we think about it nostalgically it seems like such a, a wonderful great thing but I think, you know, the origins were that it was this is the best we can do and you know, let's uh, make a Shabbos meal from it. As much as I may not crave or love eat the eating of chillin, what chillin really means to me is community. People are so into their chillin, and very often I find, even as a married woman living in a community, that men, more often than women, take charge of the chillin, and it just becomes something fun that like the, the, the guys are part of, and then the kids become part of, and it's really more of like the whole community of it. Come on, the aroma itself. Smell it when you walk in here, it smells amazing. Good recipe here today, you know, we've done that before where we've had competitions where people actually, you know, win a competition, we do put the item in production, so you never know. Well, you know, growing up in South Africa, you know, obviously in a Jewish home, um, my grandmother cooking it, coming home, smelling the aromas like you do smell here today, which is excellent. You know, the one pot slow cooking, um, it was excellent. Brought back memories when I walked in here as, you know, my youth growing up in South Africa. To me, 
I guess the best <coughs> way to describe it is comfort food. You know, uh, it's a soul food. It's you easy cooking. You know, done the night before. Let it go 12 hours because you're not supposed to cook. You know, on the burner, flame for the Shabbat. Shabbat. It's, it's soul food. It's one pot cooking, easy, great flavors. Chulin Shabbos, actually, uh, it's very funny. I was just thinking about it where Chulin now, it's almost where Shabbos afternoon you had it. Then you had it Friday night for the yeshiva guys. Now you have, especially with the restaurants, you have the restaurants serving Chulin on Thursday nights. So the new Thursday night, Friday night, you're going to start getting during the whole week. It's going to be Chulin all week. So that's where, but what it means to me, um, just uh, family, just uh, warm, uh, comfort. Uh, just something that's uh, you know very filling, filling, and just some some good old-fashioned uh, chillant uh, cooking. Wow, I I do eat at a lot of restaurants uh, around the world, so for me it's it's in a category onto itself. I'll say that. So, uh, but it's you know what you have to. Sometimes you have to be in the mood for chillant. When you're in the mood for chillant, it's the best thing in the world. Cold day, you know, something that uh, you're hungry. So there's always a time and a place for chillant. Usually there's better times for it. Personal favorites. Um, I like something different, a lot of uh, chickpeas, uh, with a lot of sweet potato. I happen to like something a little different, something a little spicy. Uh, just not your run of the mill uh, chillant and just something that's going to wow me. That's what I'm, uh, I'm always looking for. Actually, our recipe is a, uh, it's a combination of multiple family recipes we decided to put together this year. It's a uh, traditional European simis combined with a cholent. Combined with a mixed bag. You know, we put, we put some uh, farfel in there, we put some anything you could think of. We, we, it's in there. We put it in there. That's what we did. I mean, I think what's special about our cholent is the cooks. Yeah, we're all from out of town. We're just, Everybody else here, they got the same, they, oh, we got New York water. That's all they got. We got, we got TLC. That's what we got. I'm going to propose to my girlfriend if we win this competition, and that's a fact. I think we're all going to go to Disneyland and then make championship rings. Actually, Cholent actually uh, originates in the Jew we have tradition of it in the Jewish scriptures. When the Jews were uh, wandering in the desert for 40 years, every Friday they were given portions of potatoes, meat and onions, and barley and beans. And uh, one Friday, Moses forgot to collect his uh, food on time. Moses. He forgot to collect his potato, meat, barley, beans, and onions on time. He left them out over the Sabbath, and they cooked and became a cholent. And from then on, it stuck. I just, bon appetit. <laughs> go team. You want to wish the competition good luck, because they're going to need it. Oh, high five. Uh, the most disappointing moment for me was when my wife presented me on one of those Sabbath afternoons when we were having dairy with a parava cholent, which just doesn't do it. How important is air to the human being? Certain things are non-negotiable. I thought it would be fun, and uh, I thought I had a good recipe to share with the world. Anything to add? Yeah, I think a few weekends ago, we made, I think, the most delicious chunks. And uh, we tasted it, and we were like, we have this to enter. This has to enter, yes. Yeah. We have to enter, so right. that really motivated us to, uh, to join. If I, if I had a wish that I could, you know, slide into a, vat, and clear. into a vat of some kind of food, it would either be chocolate or cholent, or maybe even chocolate cholent. Actually, we should have put that in our cholent, chocolate. I, I think God made the first cholent. God made the world out of cholent. He had a big vat of cholent, and, and, like, and that became the world. And we live in this... That was the primordial vat. soup. That's, there we go. That, that was primordial cholent. And from that, molecules and us, and now we're basting in God's glorious primordial cholent. My son is actually one of the cook-offs tonight. How's he doing score-wise? Well, the scores are going up on the board as we're talking. So it looks like decent placement. What do you think about events like this for Yeshiva University? I think they're great. I think it's teaching the boys that they have to cook when they get older. I'm all for that. And what does cholent mean to you and your family? It's the one food that everybody in the family eats something of, so I'm a big fan of it. We go for a more traditional and Hamish kind of angle. We have a lot of old-time old ingredients like marrow bones. We have some secret ingredients like tomato juice, which not many people 
people have in their zone. It's not a secret anymore, apparently. <laughs> it's a lot. Well, well, we don't know how much. The and what's important is. also, what's important to note is that a lot. You'll see a lot of guys who think you can really just throw anything into a pot and call it a chillin. It's not what we're doing here. No, so we're not going to throw any barbecue sauce in. We're not doing any. It's not what we call the classic yeshiva guy chillin. Yeah, that's not what this is. This is a mama's recipe. This is it. This is a Bobby's recipe. Um, it's my mother's recipe from Morocco in Meknes, and uh, I called her up and asked her for her special recipe. And she gave it to me, and uh, it came to fruition. Thankfully, the spices and the way that it's prepared, the timing, a lot of guys just rushed in threw things together. It's about putting love into it, putting time into it, and you know, caring always the answer. about you know, the flavor that uh, that's going to come out. It's more about who's eating it, how they're going to enjoy their meal, not just getting all the ingredients together and making it right. Yeah. And that's what's really important. Legit. Ingredients. Believe it or not, Moses was up there for 40 days and 40 nights. I think 39 of those were making the ultimate chillin recipe. I mean, uh, we, because we believe that our chillin is the best chillin, and we, we want to prove that to everyone else as well. And you know, so it's a fun thing. It's always fun to attend events here. Well, you know, it's, it's called Hair Look, which is where I'm from Belgium originally, where the recipe is, has its origin, and. Uh, it means delicious in Flemish. Uh, the origin of chillin is uh, back in the day, I think, uh, in Poland and Russia when they were poor. So they didn't, couldn't afford uh, many ingredients, so they used potatoes and beans and whatever the agriculture allowed them to use and their, uh, whatever they could afford at the time. My name is Effie Schaffner. My name is Zach Weiner, and we are the Chillin Mafia. I've been making chillin every Shabbos pretty much, and it's amazing. Why would I not make chillin and have the chance to eat everyone's chillin? I grew up hating chillin, and then when I, in my time in Israel, I finally saw the light, and now I'm making up for lost time. I now love chillin, and uh, I'm very excited to be a uh, part of the competition because I love chillin now. Uh, I'm feeling confident. Effie is, a, is our main chef, and uh, he makes a he makes a, makes a mean chillin every Shabbos. So. Uh, he was one of the first guys I contacted to be on my team because I know uh, we, we have a fighting chance with him on our side. My recipe is I use the basic ingredients and anything that's lying around. So obviously there's only five secret ingredients, so we had to really narrow it down. So it was really a first time recipe. Um, well, first of all, people will, will know the name Cholent Mafia, which is very important to us. We want to walk through halls of ways and everyone know that we are the Cholent Mafia. It's mostly uh, Middle Eastern uh, Cholent. There's uh, some Persian, some Bukharian, and there's even some North African uh, spice, uh, Moroccan spice. I don't know if I'd say it's my favorite dish, but it's definitely up there. Top uh, is my mom's, uh, you ever, if you ever had Persian cuisine, you know, uh, Gondi. Gondi is where it's at. <laughs> um, I think um, it dates back to uh, Mrs. Uh, Madiar. Uh, <laughs> Madiar, uh, I'm trying to come up with some Hungarian name. Uh, probably dates back to uh, you know old uh, olden times in Europe, where they had uh, they didn't have much to cook with, so they just threw everything in a pot and they got chilling. We are more smart. <laughs> Our team name is the Golden Ladles. It has a lot of significance because uh, of an incident that happened when we were in Yeshiva and Gush. It was an incident. It was actually a chunk competition, and the prize was a Golden Ladle. And Which two of us won. He won, and he won. Yep. Two previous champions. He's got influences from the South. You know. Yeah, I'm from Atlanta. Atlanta. He's from Virginia. Texas. Texas. My grandparents are from Memphis. One? Memphis. Memphis. <laughs> Personally, my favorite dish, I gotta say, I gotta say potato gogol. I think that's the best. I'm a chong guy. Chong. <laughs> it actually used to be called chont. I, there's a guy in my community, he's a Holocaust survivor, he makes chont for the whole community. He calls it chont. That's what it is. It's not chalent, it's chont. That's what it is. That's not the history. And th I'm saying that's part of the history. <laughs> the linguistic analysis. The linguistic analysis of the word, the word yeah. chont. It's chont. And that comes from, that comes from uh, Eastern Europe, obviously. You know. There's no question that we are what we eat. And the cholent is a mishmash and a combination of all the best ingredients that we have here at Yeshiva University. 
And so by eating and by preparing the cholent and by eating the cholent, we become all unified, all the different parts in our yeshiva university. There's no future to the Jewish people without our past. And cholent brings us back to our roots, all different kinds of cholents. The famous beer cholents of the late 17th century to the famous vodka cholents of the Russian uh, oligarchs of the 20th century. And so we link with our past by eating cholent. Our president, President Trudeau, is going to break the tie. I don't understand. We bring in the best culinary expert in the country, plus these other four people. <laughs> It's like a, a nightmare. hundred people looking at you. It's very, it's very flavorful. Rachel, you have two more to go yet. Yeah. No, see. <laughs> <laughs> Watch for dinner, sweetheart. <laughs> not not, not milk fixed tonight, sweetheart. No. <laughs> okay. So this is really, very lovely. Okay, stop eating. Very flavorful. Very centrist. Very centrist. <laughs> very thorough. <laughs> Back of beans. And we love our cholent, and we really take everything into consideration to make it flavors. We, we, we got strong, really bold flavors in here. We've got spicy, we've got sweet. We have colors. Too. We have beautiful colors in this cholent. We've got everything. I love a cholent that's got some red and brown in there. It's beautiful, it's vibrant. And um, give him the cholent. It's cold. Lots cold. of meat in here. It's it's cold. Cold. Yes. Cold. There's lots of meat in here. We love meat. All men love meat. Please enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Vegetarians. I'm not making another bracha because I had you in mind. It's not because you don't have a prayer. Please <laughs> <laughs> make sure to also taste the pieces of the pasta stick right there. That's right. Right. Okay. 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 Uh, please. Okay. Travis. I love YU. <laughs> <laughs> okay, full tuition or yeah, scholarship? <laughs> Can I support Cholo? <laughs> very delicious. It's very good, as you said. It's very succulent. It's um, filling. It has a little kick to it, a spicy kick to it. It's very lovely. Good water. <laughs> as you know, uh, this is uh, the best for last. So, uh, here we go. So, this is actually uh, really a, a Hamish recipe. Hey, his, was, his was Hamish. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's Hamish. It's Hamish, you know, back then, uh, you know, my grandmother, great grandmother, all the way in Poland. You know, they really. Uh, Is that old? Yeah. No, it's, like fresh, it's, made, it's made fresh, but it's, it's that old recipe, you know, that. What's the, key, what's the key to it? The key is probably, you know, we've got a little bit of uh, the spices, the uh, barbecue sauce. Barbecue? Got, like in Poland, you have the barbecue sauce. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, she, she actually made her own barbecue. <laughs> Please enjoy. Uh, Why is it only a three-way time? Do you taste that? Why the rank? Oh, boy. Honestly, I'm supposed to have to choose, right? Okay, so they were all delicious. And if any of you are interested to come for Shabbos, to bring your challenge, we'd be really happy. Really close, really tight. One, two, three. Yeah! I mean, let's put it this way. These three teams are all tremendous winners. All of them true products of the mastery that they learn at Yeshiva University. All Second place, each 
member of the team will get a $50 gift certificate to, uh, to I'm sorry, to Eden Walk Restaurant. I want to thank uh, Eden Walk for sponsoring those. Macabines. Macabines over here. You gentlemen get uh, some money added to your cash Congratulations. And uh, great job. <laughs> thank you again to everyone for coming out. Congratulations. Uh, and thanks again for a wonderful event.